Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. Um, it has been a while <laughs> since my last uh, episode. In fact, it has been four months. Um, my last episode was back in August, just before I started um, my new job, my new teaching job. And uh, yeah, it's now December. I'm on break and getting prepared for Christmas. Um, this is my Christmas tree behind me. I thought it would be cute. I did record in front of my Christmas tree last year too. Um, yeah, so happy holidays, everybody. Um, Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Happy Hanukkah. Or I hope you had a happy Hanukkah. I think it's over now. Um, and yeah, happy holidays. So it has been forever, and I'm so excited to be here and show you what I've been up to. I have so much stuff surrounding me, all of the craftiness that I've gotten up to um, in, my, in my spare time. And um, I'm excited to share it all with you today. Um, yeah. Hey guys, so before I start the actual start of this video, I realized that I forgot to talk about a pair of mittens, a finished object. So I thought I would just go ahead and put it at the beginning. Um, last time I, <laughs> I, I talked to you guys, I um, finished these. These are hand spun Coriadale mittens that I made and um, changed a pattern from this book, uh, Latvian mittens book that I have. And um, I will have to tell you that I absolutely love these mittens and I have been wearing them a ton. When I get up early in the morning and I drive to work and my steering wheel is freezing cold, these are so nice to have. Um, I would actually like to make a um, fingerless pair eventually. But I wanted to talk about this finished object that I've made since last time. These are the Speedy Selbu mittens from um, Skane Deer, um, Ellie, and her podcast. She has a second mitten club, and these are super fast, speedy Selbu mittens. Um, I was gifted, sort of gifted, one. I won a um, giveaway from Green Mountain Spinnery um, through Ellie. And, um, I got the, um, I got all of her second mitten club for free, which was so awesome. So far, I've only made one pair. I have my eye, my, my eyes on the, the floral design. Um, if you've seen her mitten club, um, there's a, a floral design that I really, really like. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I might make those from her mitten club um, and, uh, the, there's a lot of star patterns in this, in this mitten club. There's, um, there's two that I really, really like, and I don't remember the names offhand, but that floral one, it looks like a little, like a little flower. I really like, um, so I wanted to show you these. These are a gift. They're not for me. They're for, um, well, a family member. Um, and, uh, she doesn't watch this podcast cause she doesn't, um, know about this podcast. Um, I uh, have I have kept the podcast a secret from a lot of my family. Um, most of them aren't very crafty, and I figure they don't need to know. Most people don't understand why I knit, let alone why I would record myself and share it on the internet. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to add that in at the start of this video. So I'll hand you back over to um, my my earlier self. Um, I did a lot of intros, uh, administration chat stuff for alongs that I did. So you guys can feel free to skip all of that. If you didn't participate in any of the alongs that I hosted this year, you can skip forward. Maybe I'll try to put the timestamp on here. All right. Bye. So first up, I need to talk about, um, two alongs that I hosted and one ended, one is ending really soon. So the Great Granny Square Crochet Along ended, and um, I have selected, randomly selected, uh, two winners. So I decided I'd give away um, two different prizes, and um, I wanted to wait until I recorded to show them off and to announce them. So the first winner is Beating OT. And I've decided that you have a choice. Um, I'm going to give you some of my own hand-dyed yarn. This is 
Some of the last yarn that I dyed, ooh, this one just came apart. It's okay. Let me just fix it real quick. Okay, um, I give you a choice between two, things are falling, um, two colors. Um, you can either have, <laughs> everything's falling. Okay, you can have either um, these two uh, lighter purple skeins of singles. This is my own hand dyed yarn. Um, ooh, that little beam of sunlight there. This is really true to color right here. Or these two, this one just came unskeined a little bit, but you can still see the colors in there. And I think that's showing up really true to color actually. Um, a little beam of sunlight coming in here. So you could choose between these two or these two. And, or if you prefer, so you could get, like I said, this choice, this choice, or you could choose um, one of each and do some kind of, um, I don't know, what you could do a lot of things with them. Maybe you make a shawl um, and fade one color into the other. Or, um, like I said, just choose two of the same color. This one is slightly lighter than this one, so it will actually, I think, still have a little bit of a faded effect. Um, so yeah, you can choose, that's beading OT, and you can choose from those three options, but you only get two skeins. <laughs> Um, and then the second person that won is Cher1967, and she won some little minis. These are my own hand spun. Um, these are all featured in my, my own Great Granny Square, um, and they're just little leftovers of my own hand spun. So I'm going to send these off to you. Maybe another one... Um, that I didn't bring over here, but um, these are all um, leftovers from my own Great Granny Square. And I think I might show that a little bit later when I talk about some yarn that I made for it. Um, so I will send you these. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you to everyone who participated. Um, it was a wonderful uh, crochet along and it was so nice to be able to share that experience with you all. And there were so many beautiful um, finished Great Granny Squares. And if you want to, you can go check those out in the FO thread, um, which I think I have to remember to lock pretty soon. So that's it for the uh, Great Granny Square crochet along. And I'm not going to host another one um, for 2019. Um, I might do some other things, but I've decided that I'm not hosting um, another crochet along blanket uh, Afghan project. Um, I still I haven't finished my <laughs> great cranny square. Um, I'm about, I think I need to hurry up and finish it and just add maybe one or two more rows and then put a scalloped border on it. Okay, moving on. Um, the hand spun box of socks that I hosted this year is ending soon. And I would like everyone to have their finished object photo or photos posted um, Christmas Eve, before Christmas Eve, preferably. Um, and then I can select, uh, randomly select a winner, and I'm going to send some sort of fiber to this person. I think I'm going to tailor, uh, tailor it a little bit, depending on who the person is, and I've asked you to list um, preferred color choices. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna send yet. I might make something, I might choose some stash stuff, I might use some um, of my own um, processed, hand processed fiber. I don't know yet, we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, please get those finished photos in. I posted the rules. Um, I had a number of people who finished their hand spun socks. Um, some people finished one pair, some people finish two pairs. I'm still working on mine, <laughs> trying to get them done. There's still some time if you make thicker socks to spin like worsted weight socks and knit them up really quickly. There's still time to get in a pair. So I'm actually trying to do that myself. Um, so that's it for announcements. Um, and now we can talk about um, everything that I've been up to. So I am going to start with finished objects and I was going to talk about the oldest first, 
but I think I'm actually going to talk about the sweater first because I would like to take it off. It's really hot today. So this is my Fern and Feather sweater and I finished it. Um, I don't remember what the date was that I finished this, but I finished this. It's been done for a little while. Um, I wore ice skating and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that and I'll stand up in a second. Um, this is um, Great Bay Wool Works Romney yarn that I bought at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival um, this year. And uh, I started it this spring. And um, yeah, it just uses the two colors. This is um, from a sheep named Glitter. This is from a sheep, the gray is from a sheep named Bonita. And it's my beautiful glitter sweater. <laughs> And it's finished now. Um, uh, it is Romney. Did I say Romney? And the the owner lives in the um, the shepherdess lives in New Hampshire. And I'm really excited about going back to the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival um, in the spring. So I'll just stand up. Um, I did. It's not really a great angle, but. Um, I don't remember if I made any modifications. I think I did a teeny tiny amount of like one little decrease around the waist area. And I think I should have done more because it's quite boxy. And I've got some extra room in here that I probably could have decreased a little more right here. Um, so that it doesn't, maybe it wouldn't look, it, it looks a little bit big in the, in the, the lower portion of the body but it's um, quite comfortable it's nice to wear over things it's um, it's like a DK maybe light worsted this is a DK weight sweater pattern this is a Jennifer Stein ga uh, gas fern and feather I feel like everybody knows what this sweater is um, so um, I don't know what else to say about it I really enjoy it it's just uh, it's a little bit too warm Right now, it's it's a heavier weight sweater, and um, we are experiencing unseasonably warm weather right now. Um, so, okay, I'm back. I had to change because this sweater is just way too hot to wear right now. Um, the sun is really beaming into my house and heating it up, and I thought it was hotter out than it is. It's 30, the highest 31 today Fahrenheit, um, and. Um, but that's still, that's still really warm for December. Um, anyways, moving on. That's my Fern and Feather sweater. I do love it. And I think I will try to insert some photos of my husband taking me ice skating after asking him for nearly eight years. <laughs> um, I'm coming up on my anniversary of moving to Vermont and meeting my husband. And uh, yeah, that will be eight years in January. So... Yeah, what was my next project? Oh, my husband's hat. Okay, I gotta... Okay, this is my husband's hat. Um, he has been wearing this so much, and he loves it so much. Um, this is, I believe, called the Hubby Hat, uh, and I believe it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I made it back in September. Um, his birthday is late September, so I spun and knit this um, in September and it's um, yeah it's a fully reversible hat I used two different um, well I used wool from two different fleeces that I have um, the outside is the outside well it's it's a reversible hat the brown <laughs> is um, a chocolate moret colored fleece that I got at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival and it's very soft and you can see that it's gotten quite a bit of wear it's pilling I need a gleaner and I don't have one um, so this is his favorite side to wear he likes the look of the brown on the outside I think he prefers the brown on the outside but he prefers the feel of the brown on the inside because this is softer this is a single, for those my spinners out there, this is um, a single coated fleece and it's very soft. Um, Shetland has a huge range of colors and uh, I don't want to say texture, 
um, softness to the micron count range is actually quite high and there's um, an inner softer coat and an outer there can be an outer um, hair coat um, so it's it's it is a double coated there's three kinds there's a single coated Shetland fleece um, a transitional fleece and a double coated fleece like a fully double coated fleece and that is the more um, closer to its natural ancestor uh, the single coated is um, more modern I, I don't I don't know all the details, but it's something like that, and it's softer. So the inside here is, um, I think, a transitional or a double-coated uh, Shetland fleece. This is Kelsey, and I purchased it from the breeder that, um, so I bought Layla, um, and Layla's fleece, which I've showed on previous um, fleeced FO videos, and this at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. And then later contacted the owner of Layla's Fleece, um, the sheep Layla, <laughs> and um, asked if she had any more. And I ended up buying this fleece, which is Kelsey. And um, this is a transitional or double coated fleece. It has a lot of guard hairs or, um, yeah, guard hairs. Um, some spots it doesn't have it, but almost all of it does. Um, and I think when I spun this, I left some of that in there. So that makes this harder wearing. I add some durability. You can see that this side doesn't have the pilling that the inside does. Um, and I think that it could be because he likes to wear this. Uh, I don't know. I've seen him wear it both ways. Um, I think it's because it does have, this is a little coarser, and he has said that he can feel the difference between this side and the and this brown side. But um, he loves this hat. I think it's become his favorite hat. He, um, he loves to wear this. Um, I'll just say he, this has become his lucky, my husband is a hunter. And this has become his, like, lucky hunting hat. So that's what he says. So um, that's all I'm going to say on that topic. But um, So that's it for his hat. I also have some finished yarn that I wanted to show that's in my Great Granny Square. And I might briefly show a hat that I finished, but I'm not going to show. You'll see. So my Great Granny Square blanket... I just wanted to show, it's not finished, but I wanted to show the newest row that I put on because this is some newly finished yarn, relatively newly finished yarn. It's a four ply fractal spin and I spun this really quickly, I think, one weekend. Um, and I think it's Cheviot and it's an old stash braid that I've had. Um, I decided to pull out and play with and yeah I ripped it into um, oh I don't remember how I spun it really I know it was a fractal spin and I did four plies oh I think one split was like a half of the braid and then then the next one was that then I split them in the, I have I really don't remember to be honest but um, it was spun so quickly, but it created such a beautiful um, fractal <laughs> spin <laughs> yarn. <laughs> I like. I'm trying to show you how the colors shift and change. I think it's so cool. So yeah, that was. Um, you can see the different different colors in there. This is so massive, and it's been used this whole time. I'll use it, and then I'll crochet a new row, and then I'll use it. And it's it's been like. <laughs> used while I'm making it. I'm going to try and finish this soon and put a scalloped border on the edge. Um, and yeah, I love it. I'm so glad I decided to to make this this year and to host the crochet along. And yeah. All right. Um, so the last finished object that I'm going to show is uh, the wrong side of a hat that I designed. I'm not going to put it on. Um, I feel like um, you can, I don't know, I'm trying to keep it a bit of a secret. I'm going to attempt to design, well, I've already 
sort of designed it. I'm going to attempt to write a pattern um, and maybe publish and sell it. Um, right now, it's um, my this is my own hand spun yarn. So this is the yarn that I used, and um, it's from my Corydale fleece. These two are uh, I dyed myself. This mint color and this light blue color. There's a little scrap of white yarn. And this is the undyed white. Um, these two colors, I dyed some slightly less desirable wool from my Corydell fleece. It was either sticky or had yellow spots or something. There were some spots that just weren't as nice. So I over dyed them and I ended up running this through my drum carter and I did spin it woolen style, um, like a supported long draw. So, um, yeah, it's a really airy um, woolen yarn, and um, it's spun up really fast. So that's one finished object. And then the other is the hat that I knitted with it. And I'll just show you the wrong side, because I'm trying to kind of keep the <laughs> design a secret. So that's all I'm going to show. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I showed like the brim of the hat. I don't know if I can, let's see how much I can bring up without giving anything away. Okay, that's all I'm going to show <laughs> from the right side. Um, so we'll see. I think what I need to do is test it with some more like commercial yarn instead of hand spun. Find um, the weight of yarn that I recommend. Um, I think it's a DK to worsted. It's like a light worsted maybe. I'm not sure. I think I might, I might try let Lopi and see um, if that is a good substitute. Um so it definitely, I think, should be a woolen yarn um, used for the hat. So, All right. Yeah, that's it for my finished objects, um, unless I'm forgetting something because it has been so long. But I checked my phone and looked back th through the past four months to find all the things that I've made and finished because I honestly couldn't remember all of it. Um, so yeah, for works in progress, I have a number of things. I have um, a sweater. Uh, it's going to be a cardigan. It's going to be my first steaked cardigan. And maybe I'll show you that first. Yeah, why not? So I decided to knit the Damyaka Lopa, Damyaka, Damyaka Lopa sweater. Um, the translation is flea cardigan. And, or a ladies flea, I don't know. It's a flea cardigan. And I changed this pattern. Um, the, the major construction of the body and things I haven't changed, but the design of the color work I heavily modified and did kind of my own design. And I also decided that I didn't like the contrasting color used for... Um, the button band and the cuffs and the hem. Um, I decided that I didn't like the look of that personally, so um, I'll show you. What I did was first I created my own um, color work design, and I can show you that too. Um, I started by charting a what like a different design that I wanted because I I've never liked. Um, and no offense, there's some beautiful sweaters. I just personally didn't care for the design of the color work for the yoke. But this was um, a huge, this is so, uh, such a popular design that um, I felt it would be a great first choice for a steaked cardigan because there's some hand holding in this pattern that I feel like I need for my first um, steaked cardigan. And it's designed for that purpose, and I really don't want to try and adapt a sweater to a cardigan when I haven't, I've never done a, a steak before. So, yeah, I decided to go with this and then just modify it to my own taste. So that's what I did. I started with this design. This is not what I ended up doing. I ended up changing my design quite a bit, and this is what I came up with. So... I added this snowflake in. I added this design here. There's a little small design here. I don't even know what to call that. And then I extended 
this design is already in the pattern, but I made them longer so that I think they kind of look a bit more like icicles. And my idea is that this is kind of a winter themed um, cardigan. And that these, the fleas, which I don't like the name of, um, uh, fleas are not cute. <laughs> I think of them as snowflakes instead. So just my little personal, I don't know, quirk. <laughs> I think it looks cute and to think of them as snowflakes. And the green that I used kind of looks like a wintry forest. Um, I do live in the green mountains, so it reminds me of that too. Um, little pine, pine trees maybe. Evergreens. So, um, evergreen. <laughs> yes. So this is um, the yarn that I'm using. The vast majority of this is um, from Green Mountain Spinnery, but there are two colors in here that are hand spun. So this dark color is um, Montadale. It's, it looks almost black. It's a very, very dark brown. And this color, which you've already seen in my husband's hat, um, is Shetland. So both of these are two ply fingering weight hand spun by me. Um, this Montadale is a new fleece that I've acquired and I'm going to talk about later. So I won't get into that detail right yet, but I, I did spin these two for this. So you can see that, um, yeah, that chocolate brown here and then the dark brown black um, as well. The rest of it is from Green Mountain Spinnery but um, some of it is hand dyed by me, all of the green. So here's what I did. I used this white, this is Targi, two ply sock art Lana from Green Mountain Spinnery and I dyed it to this green and I'll show you a whole cake here. It's got some little fuzzies on it. Um, this is this dark, um, it's not really semi-solid, I think it's more tonal um, green. And I dyed three of these. Um, all of this has been done with one, one cake so far and I still have this much left. So, so yeah, that was hand dyed by me and I'm, I'm pretty sure I talked about that on my last episode. Um, so I've got the green, the white, which is undyed, and this leftover um, limited edition sock art. It's a, well, it's a fine wool limited edition, um, I think John Crane. And I also got this at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, leftovers that I had from my Anasha sweater. And so I'm using this as well. So there are five colors that I'm using and I think the pattern calls for at least six so yeah here I'll give you a close-up so that's uh, my Damyaka Lopa and it's gonna be my very first steak you can see the steak there I'm pretty excited about it it will show you the inside yeah, I'll turn it inside out and show you the inside. Be careful I don't lose my needles. Stitches pop off. That's the inside. So that's the back. And there's the steak. So you can see that all of my color changes are done um, where the steak is. And then these will be cut um, and sewn down and I think I'm gonna try and find some pretty ribbon and do a really nice job of covering the steak. I haven't decided if I'm going to sew the, the two lines or if I'm going to crochet them. I could do either. Um, I haven't really decided. This is all 100% wool so I don't think I probably need the probably don't need to sew it. I don't know. Um, the Shetland in here is sticky and even the Montadale but this um, sock art Lana isn't maybe the stickiest wool so I don't know I don't know what I'll do yet um, 
I don't know if the um, if one is a, is a better method, if the sewing machine is the stronger, better method, or the crochet is maybe a little bit more flexible. Maybe that's the better method. I don't know. This is my first steak. So I'm so excited about this um, sweater. I've been putting progress on it here and there. Um, it's so easy to knit this right now. It's um, it's just a hair. You have to pay a hair more attention than you know plain stock in it because I do have to remember to do the the snowflakes. <laughs> I'm not gonna say fleece. The snowflakes. Um, and uh, I also have uh, decreases that I did for the waist shaping, and that means I have to pay attention right around the armhole area, like the side, because if I blow past them when I'm knitting the uh, snowflakes, my snowflakes will get off, and um, then I have to, uh, then I end up having to tink back like 20 stitches and fix it, which has happened too many times to count. What I need to do is put little stitch markers here so that I get to that stitch marker and I don't just keep knitting right by it. I've been telling myself that for like weeks and I keep not doing it. Um, <coughs> oh gosh, I was so sick. I uh, actually was out of school um, with, I had a cold and apparently you can get a viral form of conjunctivitis. Why am I doing this today? Conjunctivitis, which is a nice, I think a nicer way to say pink eye because pink eye just sounds awful. But there's a viral form of pink eye that you get from the cold, from a cold. And um, I had, <laughs> that was not fun. But um, it's all better now and it, it was only a few days of misery. <laughs> so um, what else am I working on? So some hand spuns. Um, projects. I've got um, two socks in progress for my hand spun box of socks. The reason why I brought up the um, the, the being sick is because my voice is almost fully recovered, but you can hear that like tickle going on back there. Um, <coughs> and my cough. I've had this cough for, I feel like a month. Okay, so I, I guess I'll show you the old one first. My old project is this unicorn's um, yarn that I spun and it's a two ply, um, opposing two ply fingering weight yarn and it's really fine. Um, I think I, I think now that I was probably like crazy for choosing to spin this and that it was probably a really bad idea because this is a fine wool, this is, this is merino. I think, I don't even know if it has nylon in it. Um, so I thought like the opposing two ply would, would add strength to it. Um, we'll see. Hopefully if I ever finish these, I'm hoping to finish them. Um, but it's taking so long because I'm using triple zeros to knit these and I left them alone for so long that like I w I've just had huge periods of time where I haven't touched them um, and I got a little bit irritated that this sock I felt was so cute and this one I was stuck in this mint color for so long but now it's got to the point where the colors are changing and um, yeah I think the tops of the socks are going to be much more similar um, looking at the the colors that are coming and these uh, these two little mini cakes. So yeah, I did. I have put on quite a bit of. Uh, I think since the last time I showed these, I've made some good progress. I really love this sock and the the little light purple that's coming in. It's transitioning to um, this light blue now. I'm trying to hold this one separate. This little light blue. Okay, so that's my unicorn socks. Um, hopefully, I'll finish them one day. I'm gonna try, I don't know. Um, it's so hard because the triple zeros make it, the, you feel like you're, you're not getting anything done. Um, so this is a finished object actually. This yarn is um, some really recently finished um, three ply Shetland and mohair yarn. And I've already started knitting socks and this is worsted weight. And so these knit up really fast. 
And I think I'm knitting them on 2.25 US ones. Um, so this is how far I've gotten. I'm doing them toe up, as you can see. And um, I'm at the point where I need to start the heel. So um, I just need to refresh my memory on, I'm going to do a short row heel. Um, probably the fish lips, modified fish lips kiss heel, I think. Basically a short row heel. And um, my voice, oh, sounds so terrible. <coughs> um, so yeah, I, it's been a little while since I've done it, so I need to jog my memory. I have, um, I, I know how to do it, but I don't remember all the little fine details. Which, so every time I knit this, unless I've just finished a pair of socks, I have to refresh my memory. Because I just don't knit socks often enough. I want to do a different kind of heel, but that takes time. It takes more time and effort to learn something new than it does to just do something you already know how to do or you've done before. Um, and the, the knitting for the sock would have been different. I wanted to do like, like if I do a heel flap and gusset, I would have had to have started some gusset increases way back here and I was already past that so um I just did some increases right here you can see for I have kind of a high end step or it's not a high end step it's a the diagonal from the base of my heel to my ankle is a little bit larger than um the length of my the ratio for the length of my foot I have that book about knitting better socks and I know that my foot is like uh, skinnier than usual for the length of my foot and my ankles are also skinnier but I maybe I have a high end step I don't know I figured out something that works to um to make socks that fit me and so it's hard to want to like change something when you already know something that works but I do want to try knitting different socks and I want to try um, a new kind of heel, but like I said, it just takes so much more time to learn something new, and I need to just get like a top, uh, a top down pattern and try something new and follow somebody else's directions, and we'll see. <laughs> or I'll keep knitting the same thing over and over again because it's easier. Oh, it's in my new bag. Um, I just got this at a local yarn store, and it's so cute. It's got my my really worn out um, fish lips kiss pattern cut out <laughs> um, that I made last year, and it's really starting to. I need to add some tape to it, fortify this thing a little bit. Um, but I got this new bag, and I think it's so cute. It's a drawstring, and I of course I love these colors. Um, so I've been keeping my new socks in here. Oh, I'm going on and on about all this irrelevant stuff and not telling you like the coolest part of these socks is that they're like a third mohair. And this is hand spun yarn. So I spun um, a Shetland. It's going to be a long video. I'm so out of practice. I I'm just rambling on and on. All right, get to the details. This is a, this is a Shetland mohair yarn. And um, it's from Into the World. It's called Gamora. The colorway is called Gamora. It was a club colorway. And it was around this time last year that I got it. Um, and I spun, I spun a single of that just end to end. I split it in half and then spun it end to end. And I have more details on my Ravelry project page and hand spun. I have a hand spun and a project page. Hand spun for the yarn project for the socks. You can go check those out if you want. Um, I'm Crafty Garden Sews on Instagram and Ravelry. <laughs> um, but my Instagram is now private, so you have to ask to follow me. And I am a little bit more choosy about letting everybody follow me because I'm teaching now. And also there were so many like knitting bot accounts that were following me, it was driving me insane. Um, and by switching to private, I didn't have to deal with that as much. I just have to click the do not accept delete button um, instead of having to go in and delete accounts that try to follow me, which are 
you know, fake accounts. Um, everybody was having to deal with that nonsense. I feel like, um, it's really frustrating. And also the occasional guy who tries to follow me and I go look at, I'm like, why is this guy trying to follow me? And it, it's some guy who has three pictures of himself. Maybe one is shirtless and I'm like, delete. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so back, back to being on topic. This is, um, so I spun the Shetland and I, I put it into a cake form and I have photos. Maybe I'll insert them. Maybe I won't. This is already going to be an editing nightmare. So I spun the Shetland and then made it into a cake and on my ball winder. And then I had spun the mohair. It was um, a purple white blend of adult mohair and kid mohair that I hand combed. And then I started spinning on a new drop spindle, um, decided I wanted to spin it faster and put it on my spinning wheel. Um, spun that really quickly. And then um, I spun, so the two ends of the cake, the inside and the outside, I took those two and I took the mohair um, on the bobbin and then spun a three ply with that. So I thought that was a really cool way to spin a three three ply much easier than spinning um, three different bobbins. Spin two bobbins and um, make a three ply. So you want the uh, the one strand of mohair needs to be about half the um, so the hundred gra let's say let's say I had a hundred grams of the Shetland um, in the braid. I'd need about fifty grams for the mohair. Um, because I'm going to be folding the Shetland in half. Um, they're never going to meet up perfectly um, because you can't, I mean, I can't spin perfectly. So one's going to be longer than the other, but it'll be very close. And mine was pretty, pretty close. I had more mohair than I had the Shetland. So I took that little bit of extra Shetland and just took it off the bobbin. And I, have no, I probably, won't, I don't know what I'll do with it, but there wasn't a lot of it. Um, so yes, this has created a really, really fuzzy sock. Um, let's see how I can show you that. I don't know if you can see it. They're really, really fuzzy, um, from the mohair and it's got this like little purple halo. Um, I need like a darker color. I use my, uh. My note, my podcast notebook. Let's see if it'll show up on that. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. The halo. They're really silky, and um, I really like them a lot. I'm very excited to finish these. All right, so I've done. I've said way too much about these socks. Moving on. Um, and I lost my page for my notebook too, to look at what I'm going to talk about. This is just um. A little uh, kind of journal that I keep. Um, I use it for my show notes and I write all the things that I want to talk about or need to talk about and um, keep track of like this is um, I don't really say episodes but this is video number 50. So things like that. I don't think I have any more notes. The rest is going to be free form. It's going to be a two-hour video. So <laughs> what else do I have to talk about? So I'll quickly mention one work in progress that I'm going to frog, I'm pretty sure. This is hand spun yarn, and I'm pretty sure I sp I've spun this since the last time. Um, <clears throat> I have this raven yarn. I have this, um, I think this is called raven, or feather? No, this is called feather. This is called harbor lights, and this is hullabaloo, maybe? These three are from Spin Jones. I purchased them quite a while ago with the idea that I would make a sweater with them before I didn't know that that would be, this is not, would not make a very nice sweater. They're so, the three different fibers, they're very different. This one has a crazy amount of Firestar and silk and just, they just, they're all a little different and I would not, I would not want to wear this um, as a sweater, I think it would, all of this little, little, like, 
shiny bits would probably not be nice to wear against the skin. Um, I feel like that would be really itchy. You see, I don't know if you can see how much they're poking out. But I thought they would make a nice sweater. Ah, not sweater. Shawl. A nice shawl. And I had cast on and just started knitting um, a crescent-shaped shawl without a pattern. And then later decided that I didn't like the shape that I was getting. Um, so I'll probably have to rip all of this out. But I got quite far before I decided that I maybe should stop and decide if I wanted to keep going or rip it out. So I knit almost all of this feather color, the darkest color, and this would be the color that would be next to my skin and my face. So this was the softest um, color, and it's the darkest, and I thought it would be cool to fade from the darkest to the lightest and have something pretty going on at the end with the lightest color. So there are some little eye, eyelet holes, lace holes, whatever you want to call them. I can't get them to show up. Um, <clears throat> so I did use almost all of this color, and then I started in the middle color, which is the very uh, shiny, fun-colored Firestar craziness. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of stopped. So, I don't know. Sometimes I think I should just keep going. And that would be a really lovely, chunky shawl. Um, I just wasn't crazy about this shape that I was getting here. And I realized too late that I should have increased a lot more at the start than I did to kind of get rid of this shape that I'm getting. But um, actually, it might not be that bad, really, because I'll be wearing it around my neck. And that little folded area, I could fold it like that, and um, it would create extra warmth right here at the neck, which um, can be very nice in cold, wintry Vermont days where the wind is blowing and it's freezing. So who knows what I'll do, but I've completely stopped working on it. I haven't touched it in a month or something like that. And it's in my old, old project bag that I sewed. This was an, um, I don't have a, I don't have a crafting from the past thing for today. It's just not going to happen. Um, that was an old crafting from the past segment. I think I should talk about a lot of the fleece and spinning stuff towards the end. So what I'm going to do is um, show you a brand new to me craft, um, braided rugs. So I have been, um, teaching myself how to um, braid, make a braided rug. And I've gotten quite far on this. Um, back in, it was back in around Thanksgiving, November, um, I was on Thanksgiving break and my husband drove me to a store called Door Mills. Um, it was a little bit of a drive, so it's always nice when I can convince my husband to drive me because then I can just relax and knit instead of spending the whole time driving, which is miserable. So I have a very sweet husband because it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't like really long drives, but he drove me to the store called Door Mills where I purchased all of the stuff that I need for this um, to make a braided rug. And I didn't need a lot of tools beyond, um, I already have a sewing machine, I already have pens and, and things like that. So there's a cat toy in here. Um, so I just have all of the wool, it's hard to show this, I have all of the different colors of wool that I bought. So I have this hound's tooth color, I have this um, kind of teal blue, and... I have this um, beautiful chevron, or not chevron, herring. Mm, what is this called? Oh, this is completely, it's, it's escaping my mind, this pattern. I'm just going to move on. It's um beautiful blue pattern. What is that called? Um, I have white. <laughs> and I have... This, uh, what's well, kind of a cream. I just bought a little bit of this. 
the rest of these colors I bought one yard of each color and I bought this dark darker green these little wheels um, I make so here's just a strip of two inches of the fabric so I bought braiding yards from the store called, called door mills or door the door mill store door mill and um, I found out about the store from my great aunt my great aunt Nancy hi aunt Nancy if you're watching um, she also lives in Vermont she's my only living relative she's my only relative that lives in Vermont um, and she makes braided rugs too and she told me about this well she makes braided rugs I just learned how um, and she um, told me about this store so yeah I went over there and I bought enough wool to make a small rug relatively small rug and um, yeah I just bought the colors that I thought I would like I make these little wheels which makes it easier to braid if I take out this pen that's holding it um, you can see I've just folded over um, towards the center and then I fold towards the center and then when I'm braiding I actually take my fingers and I fold again let me put this back in here so it doesn't all come apart. Okay, so I take this and I fold it and then I make the wheel. And the wheel just, once it sits like this for enough time, like overnight, it'll kind of hold this shape nicely. Makes it easier to braid. They have these little metal things that you can use if you want to buy them, but um, I actually like this this way, this method. Um, so while I'm braiding, <coughs> excuse me, while I'm braiding, um, I'm actually just folding that in half and I kind of run my finger through the middle like that and just fold, kind of pinch and fold. Um, and then I braid. And it's just a regular old braid. Um, I taught myself with the use of um, this old book that I've had since I was like 17. Back, 17 year old Stephanie thought that making braided. I'm not kidding. I, I got this book on braided rugs when I was 17 and I thought it would be cool to learn how to do back then. So this is proof that I've always been this cool. Um, so, <laughs> and it was really my great aunt Nancy who, um, helped like further, um, make this a reality, I think, because she told me about this store where I could get the supplies and it just kind of helped that become, um, more realistic to something that I could really do um, and seeing hers because she has a bunch around her house and um, it's been too long since I've seen you Aunt Nancy we need to visit so um, to my grandfather's sister so anyways those are the colors that I have I'm pretty sure I showed you them all I also have a pair of nice scissors in here for oops for cutting the, um, well, I do like a little two inch snip and then I rip the fiber from the yards, from the yard of fabric. Um, I have nice scissors and for cutting the joins, when I join, I join, I sew them on the diagonal. So that's for cutting that. I have a ruler. So my ruler um, I'll use to mark the two inches when I cut the fabric. And then I bought specialty, um, uh, cotton thread it's uh, has a special name I don't remember um, but I bought it they sell it at the door mill store and what's cool about it is it's hollow and you can do this uh, special join which creates a knot there's a there's no knot and um, it's a seamless join and it hides really nicely in the braid in the rug so I'll get my rug back and show you I have some videos on my U on my YouTube. This is my YouTube channel. On my Instagram account, I have some little, um, not that great quality, but they're there if you want to check them out. On my Instagram, I created, you can save your stories and create a theme. So I have one on braided, on the process of braiding, where I started at the beginning, and I have like kind of a little bit of a journey um, of learning things and then I have one on the materials and somebody had asked me about that and I'm just was like check out that video because I did little Instagram stories on my profile because I already talked about it all the materials so 
Um, so yeah, I started in the very center. I'm braiding an oval rug. I'm in my rocking chair. Let me scooch back. Um, I'm making an oval rug. It's gotten really big, as you can see. Here, let me stand up. It's getting really big. Um, compare it to the size of my body here. <laughs> um, yes, and I love it. It looks so pretty on camera, too. I feel like I'm so on top of it sometimes that I judge it more than... It's, I mean, it's my first rug, but I judge it like harshly when I'm right on top of it, braiding it. But when you stand back and look at it as it, it will be like on the floor, um, it's, it's so pretty. <laughs> so uh, right now I am getting to the point where each strip, so here's my little wheels that, and I keep them like this. And then as I get closer, I'll move my pins that are holding them um, so that I have a little bit more yardage. And then I just, ink, I just move them little bit by little bit. Um, and so yeah, I taught myself how to do this with the help of, um, there's a few YouTube videos out there, not a lot. There's only one, in my opinion, um, set of braided, traditional braided wool rugs. There's some with like, quilt, um, with the t-shirt materials, there's like other things, but if you're looking for how to make a more traditional wool braided rug. Um, there's only one set of videos out there on how to do that. And I believe her name is Marjorie. Um, and I don't remember what her account, her channel name is, but if you search braided wool rug, um, there's not a lot of stuff out there, so you'll find it. Um, so I watched some of those videos. They were helpful. It didn't give me everything that I needed. My book really came in handy. It's an older book and I don't have it on me and I don't want to take the time to go and get it because this video is already so long. But I've shown it in on my Instagram stories and um, that talked about the skipping that you have to do around the, um, the curve. You need to do skipping. My dog's barking at something. Um, you have to do skipping so that you don't get the, uh, it won't get uh, warped out of shape. You have to add in more fabric around the curve. It's kind of like if you were to crochet this kind of shape, you would do like two crochets into one. That's kind of the same idea by skipping, you're putting like twice as much fabric in one spot. And, uh, and skipping, I mean the lacing. If you don't know anything about braided wool rugs, it's so hard to explain. Um, what are my dogs barking at? Okay, so that's it for my rug. I really love it. I can't wait till I finish it. Um, I will probably, who knows when I'll get to record next. Um, it's so difficult to find time to record. It's very time consuming to do this and then edit it. And I'm going to have such an editing nightmare. Um, so yeah, this is my braided rug. I really, really, really love it. Um, I can't wait till I finish it. And, uh, Ooh, I'm, I'm really nervous about the finishing process. Um, so that's going to be the next like learning hurdle. <laughs> okay, so um, this is going to be a very spinning heavy segment of this already very long video. Um, but I probably will be gone for a long time again. So it's just, you know, you can watch it in parts or I don't know how. You guys can figure it out. Um, <laughs> so... Yesterday I got in the newest issue of Ply Magazine. This is the sock yarn issue. And I I only had a chance to read like one article and maybe a half of another one last night and I'm already so, so happy. This is such a great issue. Oh, I have to say that this should have been the front cover, not the back cover. This is so cute. It's um, a little sock monkey spinning and it has um the drop spindle here and I think this is so adorable and I mean I get like they're trying to show off these like sock yarns but this is much cuter just have to say um so I read I think I just randomly opened to a page and started reading an issue which is so unlike me I'm a read from the beginning chronologically usually kind of person but I don't know magazines are different um, so I read an article by a podcaster, and I don't remember her name. I'm trying to find it. Oh, 
um, a good yarn nylon versus mohair, which is really relevant to me because I just showed you earlier my um, Shetland mohair socks. Um, these guys right here. Um, so I was really curious to read about um, what she had to say about nylon versus mohair. There's a little um, two socks that she spun and then knit to compare and she kind of gave the um, uh, compared and contrasted the two different socks. One had nylon, the same amount of nylon, same amount of wool. The other one had the same amount of wool, same amount of nylon, uh, mohair instead of nylon. I don't feel like I said that very clearly, but you, I think you get the point. Um, and uh, then compared them to see like is one, you know, more, I don't know. You should read the article. <laughs> so um, that was really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, I don't think there was a winner. There was more of a, um, this one's better for this, this one's better for that, maybe kind of thing. Unless you are just against using synthetic fibers, then mohair is the clear winner. And I'm leaning that way. I'm not against nylon at all. I just, I think my preference would be to choose a natural fiber. But I was excited to read the rest of this and see what other like wonderful tips um, are in here. And uh, I love this magazine so much. There's darning in here too. Um, one day I might have to use that so that'll be handy. None of my socks, knock on wood, have uh, had any holes yet. So, And I do wear them. Um, I do love my hand spun socks. So yeah, I recently got this, but I thought I would update you on, um, you all on, uh, the two events that I went to. I went to, um, the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival back in October and the Rhinebeck New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. What date was that? <laughs> I'm totally blanking. Um, so I went to those two. I went to, um, it was, it was... November something. <laughs> Fifth? Um, and uh, I went to those two festivals um, since the last time that I recorded, and I haven't really talked about them uh, unless you follow me on Instagram. Um, so I thought I would share what I bought um, and what I've done with what I've bought so far. So I bought at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, that was the first one, so I'll talk about it first. I got to run into a few fellow Vermonters, including the um, the lovely uh, Jenny and her husband Devin. Um, from uh, she has a um, YouTube, she has a podcast um, called Tiny Paper Foxes. Yeah, so I was just um, worried that I was saying that wrong. Um, I think they're married. I'm not sure, but Jenny and Devin from um, Tiny Paper Foxes. They also live in Vermont. I met them twice now. <laughs> I met them at Vermont Sheep and Wolf Festival and I met them at um, Rhinebeck. Um, and it was so funny, I didn't run into anybody um, that I hadn't already met at Rhinebeck. I ran into the ladies from um, Muscle of Yarn, which is a sh yarn shop south of Burlington in Shelburne. And um, I ran into, although I hadn't met all of the ladies, all of the owners, I mostly met one of them because um, she's always there when I go up. Um, and um, Kelly. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I doubt you're watching this. I don't know. I feel like nobody wants to watch this, but. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, where was I going? Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. I bought, I'm slightly embarrassed. Not really. I don't know. It's my thing, and I really love it, and I'll get around to all of them eventually. I bought three fleeces at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, and not only did I buy three fleeces, they're all the same color. <laughs> um, okay, so I bought three different kinds of sheep fleeces, but they're all dark brown to black. <laughs> Um, I've started spinning one of them. I've played with another one and the third one I have tried my very best to keep my hands out of because I, you're never going to get anything done if you don't like put enough progress on one thing. If you spread out your time on like 20, 50 different things, nothing's ever going to have progress made. So I'm trying to remind myself that I need to 
put effort into one thing, get that done, then I can play with the next thing. So um, the first one I'll talk about, um, I and I always feel like everybody already knows this because you follow me on Instagram, but not a lot of people follow me on Instagram. So um, a bunch of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, and that's, I don't, I'm not asking you to follow me. Only follow me if you want to follow me. Um, so, um, I have this Montadale fleece and I have a whole bunch of, it's so dark. I have a whole bunch of combed, um, little nests in here. Um, and, and the bottom I have a second fleece because this lady, she, I think it was her first time selling at a fleece at a festival. Uh, I actually met her. I thought she was buying these, and she was like, no, I'm putting them in the sale. So I got to ask her about them. I incorrectly called this um, in my Instagram a Montadale fleece, and I was wondering why it looked different than the photos in my fleece and fiber source book. And I thought, well, maybe it has the history of Montadale has, um, oh, I feel like I'm saying this wrong. I'm Cheviot, but I'm pretty sure it's Cheviot and... Oh, shoot. I'm blank. I'm so blanking. I'm not going to go get it. Anyways, this is a Montadale cross and not a pure bread Montadale. So that's why it looks so different. Um, this is like a medium, uh, I would call it like a medium class. It is, it's not as fine as, um, I think a true Montadale is finer than this. I'm trying to find some nice looking locks because I've, um, combed all of the the top. There were, like I said, two fleeces in this bag, and she sold it for thirty dollars. Okay, so that means each fleece was fifteen dollars, um, which is dirt cheap for a fleece, and it was, in my opinion, quite nice, um, especially for the price. And there's just something so alluring about this that I had to buy it, and I immediately started playing with it. Um, so this is locks from the second fleece that's on the bottom, and I chose to um, keep them separate and hand comb the top fleece, which was um, slightly nicer, and I think it's it was slightly softer. Um, this is definitely not a, a super soft wool. It's very it's like a medium. It's not as hard as a long wool. Um, something like maybe Lincoln would be a little bit more um, r coarser. Um, anyways, it's it's like a medium. Um, it's uh, I would say it's I'd say my Corydale is softer than this, um, but I thought that this would make a really nice um, maybe a cardigan outerwear garment, and um, I'm really wanting to explore and try different <laughs> different fleeces. Um, I'm making fun of myself, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm i trying to um, try out different wools, different fleeces, different, I just want to experiment and I want to try all of the, all of the different kind of wool out there. And so I don't want to just get fine wool all the time. I don't want to just get Cor uh, Corydale, Cormo, merino um what are the other ones that people i feel like i, I did get some rommeldale which is so nice um but <laughs> I, i'll get to it anyway so that's my monodale fleece and i started sorry i started spinning it i um took out uh i i combed all of it and then weighed all of it added up all of the the total grams that i had and then divided it by the number of skeins I decided I would make. I think that was five, if I remember correctly. Um, and I tried to figure out as, as best as I could um, the number of... Uh, I wanted to do a three-ply. And so I wanted to figure out how much of each... Um, how much... How, mu how many... The total grams that I wanted to spend for each bobbin of those three plies. So I figured that out was 41 grams for each bobbin. So there, I have three bags that are all 41 grams, or as close as I could get, um, to spend 
for a skein. So this skein was a, a three ply. And um, I spun the three bobbins and then it's a traditional three ply, so nothing, nothing fancy going on. Um, it is um, combed on my Valkyrie Extra Fine Combs and I might have to get that to blow out to show. It's a super lovely chocolate brown. It's so nice. Um, so that is one finished skein. I have four more to do. I have one in progress. Oh, I actually have a bobbin. Here's a bobbin actually that I finished. So this is one um, package spun. And then I'll have two more to do and um, then I can ply it. So I think, yeah, I think I figured out I was going to make five total skeins. Um, it's a DK weight worsted prep woolen spun. So I did end up combing um, some extra of the second fleece, but I don't think you guys need to know every little detail of what I did. I don't know, because this video will be three hours long. So, so that's my Montedale fleece, and my hope is to knit a light DK outerwear garment cardigan, probably. Um, so that's one fleece that I bought at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. The second one has been moved to like a grocery store bag because I could fit it all in here. Is the Winsley Dale is a Winsley Dale Romney cross fleece. And it's so different than any of the other fleeces that I've ever uh, worked with. Um, it's it's just I'm used to all of the fleeces that I've worked with so far. The the structure of the fleeces so that it clumps together and the locks all kind of like clump together and they they sit together versus like this just hangs. Um, it's so different than than anything that I've experienced. So it's, I, I love that kind of thing. I love doing things that are new and fun and exciting and learning how to handle. Every fleece is different. There's so many different kinds of uh, sheep's wool and there are, um, they're, they're not all, they shouldn't all be handled the same. I don't think they should all be washed the same or prepped the same. I think some are better, you know, different methods are better for each kind of fleece. And this one um, is a new learning experience for me because um, I've never never dealt with one like this before. So um, I decided to, I get, there's no way I can do this chronologically. I have to kind of cross um, back and forth. I, um, I decided to, um, because the tips are kind of, this was a lamb's I think it was, I'm pretty sure this was a nine months or something. It was a lamb's fleece. And the tips aren't um, that that nice. Um, I think some people intentionally break off the tips from a, a lamb's fleece like that because they will break off in the finished yarn. Um, but I'm not going to go through and manually pick off all of the tips because they're they're weaker and they're brittle I guess it, that's just something that happens with the the first fleece um, <clears throat> but um, yeah I'm not gonna go through and pick all of them off partially because I have a tool that's doing some of that for me um, so what I was gonna say is that I started prepping a little bit some of this and I stopped because I like I said I really need to focus on one thing at a time but I had got um, at Rhinebeck I, this year, I got this brand new comb, um, or not comb, it's a carter. It's a flick carter. And it's a Clems and Clems um, walnut uh, little hand carter. It's a flick carter. And I didn't know how much I would enjoy this. Th these are probably the least expensive tool that you can purchase for fiber prep. Um, and it's one of the, um, you know, I, I bought all these other things before I bought this and this is, um, so nice and it's not very expensive. Um, so I started, uh, using it to open up these 
locks and I actually started combing some of it but I found that the tips were um, a little bit uh, I don't want to say mangled that doesn't sound if that sounds bad but they they weren't that nice to comb so I found that this actually worked much better and it helps while I'm while I am I, I kind of think of brushing brushing it out the uh, the tips some of them um, the weaker uh, fibers break off and then I just clean this will get a bunch of little short fibers in it and I'll clean that off and keep going so in this little bucket thing <laughs> I put um, some of the some of the ones I've flicked open some of the locks I've flicked open and I just flicked um, you can see all of it here that's the the cut end this is the tip end I just flicked the both ends and um, yeah I think what I'll do is spin them from the lock just flicked locks um, I do have these these little pieces that I tried combing first but like I said I felt like um, for this fleece this wasn't actually the most ideal way to prep um, this fleece and here's a little teeny sample that I spun I think on one of my new drop spindles and then knit just for fun um, I'm not gonna create this yarn I don't think I just wanted to play with it a little bit so <clears throat> that's it for the Wensleydale Romney cross fleece I think I said that correctly it's Wensleydale Romney cross it's a lamb's wool um, so that's the second fleece that I purchased at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival the third fleece that I purchased at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival and all of the browns by the way they're all very dark brown to black but they're all different um, different <laughs> they're all dark brown to black but they are slightly different and they feel different and the yarns will be different and yeah the drape will be different and all the there's lots of differences <laughs> um, and they're different wools and I really want to try different kinds of wools so the third one is an Icelandic fleece and I'm pretty sure this is 100% um, Icelandic um, from a Vermont farm they had a few bags of this so this is the darkest of the fleeces that I have um, the closest to black brown and um, it's just so lovely it's uh, and this needs washing for sure um, and it has a very very long there's the tog and the fell if I could be saying that wrong um, one is the outer coat one is the the fluffy inner coat so you can see there there's the soft really soft but very short fluffy inner coat and here's the long and coarse outer coat and um, it's this is the same wool that makes let lopi and lopa pesa I don't know all the other ones um, it yeah it has the inner coat which is soft and shorter and it has the very long coarser um, outer coat and they're spun together or um, they're let lopi isn't really spun per se I think it's pin drafted and then oh, I don't know um, so I've got to figure out how I'm going to spin this because the inner coat is so short um, I think I am going to mix them together I could separate them I guess I could show you I could separate them let's see let's split this maybe that'll be easier separate the um, the inner soft coat from the very long outer coat I could separate them and use them for different purposes like this would make a really great warp for uh, some people are gonna hate me for saying this a rug <laughs> um, but if I spun them together I could create my own sort of Icelandic style yarn which is probably what I'll do so yeah and I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do all of that yet um, we'll see so that's it for the fleeces that I purchased at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. I actually did spin a teeny bit. This is the Icelandic, and it's so dark that you're not going to be able to see 
anything. <laughs> but there's a little bit of um, some yarn that I played with with the Icelandic. And it does have both coats mixed together. And I mixed them on my um, hand cards. I think I made like, I tried to make a roll lag. And then I felt like that would be the best way to get the fibers mixed. Combing would wouldn't be the best prep if you're trying to really mix together the two lengths of fiber because you'll end up just spinning the longer fibers. Um, it, it's harder to get in those short fibers so this kind of like a like the hand combs the hand cards I felt would mix together the two lengths so that while I'm spinning it um, I don't get that situation where I'm only pulling out the long fibers. So I also purchased this drop spindle. This is a lead better. And what's really cool about this at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, what's really cool about this is that you can take off the um, shaft. Yeah, let's say shaft. Um, and replace it with one of these other ones so that you can keep spinning and you can make three um, cops. Uh, so spin this one full, spin this one full, spin this one full, and now I can three ply them together. And that's pretty cool. So you don't have to stop, unwind it all, um, you know, make it into a ball or whatever you're going to do with it, and then use this again, the same shaft again. I can just pop it off, put on a new one, and keep going. And then all three cops I can spin together into the three ply. So it's time saving. I haven't done that yet. I've only spun little bitty things on here for fun. Um, it's quite a nice spindle. I do really enjoy it. It wasn't, this was my first nice top whirl spindle. Um, and by nice, I mean slightly expensive. Um, not terribly expensive, but um, worth the money for sure. For what you're getting. This is a really cool concept. I do have to say that um, I'm not crazy about the hook. I have a new favorite when it comes to the the hook, um, which I'll show you. And, and well, I could show you now, I guess. So that's it for Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. For Rhinebeck, I bought the Clems and Clems Flick Carter that I showed you. And I bought this Bosworth, um, Jonathan Bosworth um, spindle, and he was there. I did purchase it from him, and he talked to me a little bit about the wood, because I asked him about it. This um, only has one shaft, and it is the smoothest. It, this was so nicely um, sanded, I guess, because this is so, so smooth. And I have uh, mohair on this right now. This is um, his Picasso um, top. So this is, he told me, the only wood that he uses that isn't solid wood. All of his are made with solid wood except for this one, which is actually made from flooring. <laughs> which I was like, this is so funny that I would be so drawn to this one. Um, I loved the look of the Picasso wood and the the different colors in there. And I I'm not a I don't know very much about wood at all. I can't pick out what things are made out of easily, but um, clearly because I thought this was real wood and not not like flooring, <laughs> different woods put together. But um, I just loved the look of it so much. And um, it spins so beautifully. I got the largest size. I believe he calls these maxi. And yeah, I'm spinning some mohair on here. Some more mohair on here for another pair of mohair, um, thicker mohair socks. Because I decided that even though I haven't finished my pair that I'm knitting, um, I love them already. So I want more. <laughs> and I've made these little nests of mohair. And I'm just spinning um, the same, kind of for the same thing that I did with the Shetland mohair socks that I'm knitting. Um, I'm going to have one of these and then I'll find um, 
some braid of something to probably spin quickly and ply together with it. So I purchased locally some more mohair because I used all of the hand comb stuff that um, I used all of that for my socks. And this was just um, from a local store and I um, it was already combed and everything. It, um, yeah, it has a little bit of vegetable matter in it, but um, I don't have to do any of the work combing and whatnot and it wasn't very expensive at all. So it's twelve dollars for um, four ounces, and I'm only using half of it for this spin. And I am gonna try to actually spend all of it on my my spindle, because what's the point of having a very nice um, spindle, you know, handmade drop spindle, if you don't actually use them? So I'm trying to get myself to really use them, and I'm really enjoying. Um, I would say that this is my favorite right now I love the I love the you know that these are interchangeable but I prefer spinning this one um, I just enjoy the way it spins and in particular I really love the hook on this spindle there's just something about it I don't have to do a half hitch I don't have to do I just hook it through it and spin and then when I go to wind on I just do this kind of motion and then I wind it right on and it's just so much easier than stopping and creating a hitch. Um, it holds nicely, it doesn't fall off and fall on the floor um, like a cheaper spindle that I have. Not my not my lead better. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about um, the student spindle that I purchased, my first spindle I purchased. But I do have to say that I prefer this um, hook on this spindle way more than this one. This one has a bit of a curl to it and I find that this actually works much better. I find that this like elongated shape just is better in my opinion. Okay so that's uh, for Rhinebeck. I um, yeah I was saying I met Ginny and Devin. I met them both at both festivals. I also met uh, ran into Tammy from Wing and a Prayer Farm um, um, more at Vermont Sheep and Wool. We got to chat a little bit. And then um, I met, yeah, uh, the Must Love Yarn ladies. Um, some of them I met for the first time, but Kelly I've met multiple times. And that's all the people that I ran into are people that are from Vermont. Um, and that's so weird because there are so many people from all over the world at, uh, Rhinebeck. Um, so I'll show you this. I did buy a bag. Um, I bought this, um, Rhinebeck bag that, you know, they sell t-shirts and whatnot. And, um, normally I wouldn't be this kind of person. It's like a souvenir kind of thing. But this bag is actually pretty awesome. Um, it has these really long pockets, which I thought would actually be like good spindle pockets. They're so long. And there's two of them on the outside. And then on the inside, it has this divider bag. Oh, look, there's my uh, pamphlet. And my Clems and Clems card. If I have anything, I haven't used this yet. I've been trying to keep the dog hair off of it, which is almost impossible. But it has this really nice divider pouch, so you can put something in here, and then you can have like two sides to divide if you wanted to have like multiple projects going on. Have some spindles on the outside, um, and I thought the sheep was so cute. I thought it was a practical bag. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so I did get that at Rhinebeck. And then my biggest purchase, at right, my last thing that I got, I'm pretty sure I'm not forgetting anything else. The last thing that I got at Rhinebeck was, was a fleece. And, oh my god, I just realized that I never, I forgot to record something. Okay, um, the last purchase that I, uh, the biggest purchase that I got at Rhinebeck was my Rommeldale fleece. CVM Rommeldale. Um... This is by Marushka Farms, CVM Rommeldale Sheep. This is um, Vladimir, and I really love, this lady included, this, this uh, discoloration is from the fleece, by the way, from the lanolin and stuff, dirt. 
Um, she included this little card in here. It includes like some tips on the back and on washing the fleece and she included a um, pin with um, like her farm on there and um, just the information about the sheep which this is as as a hand spinner and a fleece buyer I think all farms should do this and it doesn't have to be this fancy it could just be a plain old index card but I think the sheep's name, the date of birth on here, and the date sheared, and just things like that so I know something about this fleece um, is, I think, a little extra touch that I think everybody should do for their fleeces, but that's, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing the process of like picking and cleaning them and pre preparing them for the, all the work, so, um, I, but I still think that this is um, a really, really nice touch. And if, if you can, I think um, sh shepherds and shepherdesses should um, should do this. So I'll show you the wool now. Um, try and get some hair out of it. There's dog hair. It's gotten here. Um, this is one bin. I, I separated it not for washing. I'm going to spin this raw. I'm actually spinning a whole bunch of my fleeces unwashed um two two of them at least I washed the um Winsleydale Romney Cross so I sorted out two of these bins the fleece I picked out all of the locks and put them this going the same direction so that um it's nice and easy just to pick up and if I want to just either here's one where I just combed out the tips or not combed flicked open the tips and here's let's see one that I haven't so there's one that I haven't um so this is Vladimir which I love because I'm I'm a fan my husband and I both love um the monsters what is it called um you know with um Adam Sandler <laughs> and um anyways there's Vlad Vladimir he's the uh, grandfather of um the the little kid Dennis what is the name of that movie Hotel Transylvania <laughs> um my husband and I love that that uh, movie and um so anyways this is Vlad and I separated out two bins worth oh look there's the colors really good there's a range of um brown to almost gray brown there's some white hair wool there's some white hair that's got in there that almost creates this gray appearance. There's some spots that are lighter, some spots that are darker. There's really a mix. And then I separated out around the edges. There was much darker, more chocolatey um, areas that I separated. I don't know if that'll... It's so dark. That's the problem with dark wool. I separated it um, out and this mm, probably needs washing um, and definitely needs this there's more VM because this was more around the outside there's a little bit more VM in this um, vegetable matter and uh, but it's darker it's still so nice um, there is a section that I pulled out that I'm not going to show that I'm going to try and save that has to be washed um, but this stuff is more chocolate brown than this, which is a little bit, just a little bit lighter, almost kind of a gray brown. Um, and there were some odd white spots in there too, like, uh, just little teeny spots of white wool. Um, so this is Rommeldale CVM and it is a fine wool. This is, um, so, so, so soft. And I'm going to have to figure out what I want to make with this. But these two, I think, are going to become some kind of garment. Like, or not garment, like a sweater or cardigan. Um, a very, very nice, very soft, very nice sweater. And this darker stuff that has the little bit of VM and whatnot will be um, also a very nice, very soft, I think, I'm going to go for kind of an elegant, um, classic kind of, um, 
you know, it'll, it'll be all one, one color, really well blended, um, shawl, very soft and something that just looks like timeless. Um, I don't know. That's kind of my idea. So that's it for, um, Vlad. I've got the, the two bins that are going to be probably a sweater and then this bin, which might be a nice sized, um, soft, beautiful shawl. Uh, and that's it for my fleeces. And I think I talked about everything that I got at the festivals. I didn't, I didn't meet anybody, um, uh, else that I, I don't think I met anybody else. Cause, um, I, uh, I didn't go to the podcaster meetup. I went with my husband and I just focused on what I wanted to do. And I didn't try to do like, um, I don't know. I I just felt like with my husband there, I didn't want to make him. He he's not a social butterfly, and the crowds were so so. We, I went on Saturday, and the crowds were so crazy that I felt like um, I just didn't want to put him through through all of that. He doesn't like a lot of attention, and so it was just the two of us and we just went I just went to um number one I wanted a fleece I wanted a very nice fleece I decided I was willing to spend a little bit more money um to get something nice and I didn't spend oh my gosh the prices there are insane there are three four hundred dollar fleeces at Rhinebeck New York uh, sheep and wool I didn't get anywhere close to that I spent a little over a hundred dollars I'll tell you that much on this um Rommeldale CVM which is so soft and so amazing and very clean and I think absolutely worth the money. Um, but I could have, they're available for purchase is there was a $400 fleece there and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, um, I think I forgot to talk about these mittens. So I'm going to stop recording this now and go see if I, um, have to go back and record this segment for um, finished objects. But before I go, I will do one really quick chit chat kind of thing, even though I've been so chatty this whole time. But I, I won't talk about school and teaching. But I'll tell you one thing that I think is really funny. And um, sometimes there are really, really hard days teaching is is can be really tough. Um, but, um, there's, there's just these little silly, ridiculous moments that are so, you know, bright in your day. And so I have, um, students will ask me, you know, what are we doing today? And, <laughs> and, um, one day I got that same question from one student who asked me a lot, what are we doing today? And, um, one day I responded the same thing we do every day, Pinky, and, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there used to be this cartoon back in the 90s um, called Pinky and the Brain, <laughs> and and um, it always starts out with, what are we going to do today? Um, yeah, what are we going to do today? I don't know if he said brain. Anyways, and uh, brain is the, the mastermind, and he always says the same thing we do every day, Pinky, try to take over the world, <laughs> and... Um, so one day I said that, I said the same thing we do every day, Pinky. And then I had to explain it cause they have no idea what Pinky in the brain is. And, um, and so it became this thing that I said, um, to this, to this, for this one class that I teach. And then one day, um, the same kid comes in he says, what are we going to do today? And I just kind of smirked. I didn't say anything. I smirked. And then one of my other students said the same thing we do every day, Pinky. And I, I just died. I loved it. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's all, that's all I have to talk about today. Um, so I'm going to get off here. Um, it's been really nice to catch up with you all and, uh, all right. Bye. See you next time. It might be a little while, but I'll be back on here eventually. Bye.